What you're about to hear is a casual conversation between myself, Deeg, and Mukas, one of Planetside 2's most prolific content creators and community figureheads. Sit back, have a listen, and enjoy. Welcome to Basement Side. My name is Greg, Hello. also known as Deeg. I'm here with my friend Mukas, aka Salim. What is up? Hey, Deeg. I'm good, alhamdulillah. Not infected yet. Not infected is a good way to be. I'm, I'm, I'm so far so good. How are things? You're, you're on, you're in Marrakesh, right? Yeah, Marrakesh, Morocco. What's the general feeling about COVID around your parts? Mm, man, people are terrorized here. Since the country is um, mostly, most of the country is working with tourism, uh-huh. it all went to zero. So uh-huh. people are freaking out. And for the measures, we just uh, imitate what's going on in Europe. So they, they, there's a quarantine, so we do quarantine too. It started uh, yesterday. So they start to ask you for um, a, a certain kind of authorization just to go out. Damn. So what yeah, but uh, for me, I'm, to do? actually, since I have my company, I, I just have to write it for myself. But some other uh. people, they, can, uh, they have to... to to have an authorization if and say if they just want to buy stuff or if they have to go to work. So it's pretty weird. Never seen a situation like that for Morocco. It's uh, I, I don't know what to think of it. I'm always positive in my in my head. I know it's gonna be good anyway. It's gonna end up good. But here, people are pretty much freaking out. Yeah, that seems to be the sentiment I'm observing too. So I'm I'm out here on the west coast of the U.S. I actually live about seven miles away from that retirement home where it first broke out here in the seattle area and uh i think almost no one knows what to do is my sentiment sentiment. uh Uh, and the gamers among us us, i think feel a little safe because we just want to stay inside anyway yeah actually yeah it's true that for gamers it doesn't change much (laughs) it doesn't change a lot but yeah i've been a I, d- I don't know if you follow all the SSP things, uh, the cosmic. Di- have you heard of cosmic disclosure? No. And uh, I've been following what what, uh, what what's been saying, what uh, what is being said with the with, on this topic of with the cosmic disclosure, and I think it's going to be a, a transitionary phase. It's going to be harsh, but it's going to end up uh, for the better. Huh. Cosmic disclosure. Man, what I'm shocked said? you haven't heard of this. Is it, a TV show? Is it a TV show? It's a show that was on Gaia TV. It's um, uh, online with David Wilcock and Corey Good, mostly. Now okay. there's other guests with po- people talking about um, the their extended UFO uh, UFO stories, but uh, ah. in, in very deep detail, with like a cra- crazy for for hours and hours and hours and hours of shows. So yeah, I, I got addicted to this. SSB is Secret SSB Space is Program? Space yeah. I've never heard of this. It's, um, I, I sometimes I, I did a video about this long time ago. It was uh, going down the rapid hole, and I, I'm, still, I'm still in the hole. Hmm. <laughs> What's the basic idea of SSP? That there is a secret, uh, there is, a, there is a spaceships going around uh, in, in space from Earth from, since a long time, and uh, people here are not aware of it. And they're ke- being kept in the dark. Yeah, well... But I'm probably really bad to talk about this. Yeah, it's definitely uh, not quite what I had in mind, but I'm insanely interested to hear more about it. So how long have you been into this stuff? Man, I've been so intrigued by the UFO stories since I was a adolescent, how do you say, like teenager. Uh-huh. I was like, this is weird, this, uh, this lights. And I was uh, already reading books about it, like... Uh, maybe 15 years ago, and I kept it just in the back of my mind, but I kept going in my life. And maybe two, one, one year and a half uh, ago, I, I discovered all the cosmic disclosure videos. There is uh, hundreds of them with all of, of the people telling much more detailed story than what we used to have uh, like 15 years ago, 20, 20 years ago. Now it's mostly people talking about like uh, cl- close encounters with ETs, Talking about them, communicating with them, their culture, etc. All they have to say about us, etc. It's hilarious. So yeah, it's like I always loved sci-fi, but uh-huh. now it's like a reality. So do you kind of watch if, it if for fun, it. or because you, or do you feel like you believe it too? Uh, because of the 
amazing knowledge that there is in all these videos and the the, the sp spiritual growth that's uh -huh. coming out of it. Like there is a very deep wisdom in all of this uh, this content. This is why I like to watch it. This is this makes more sense for me than than like a mindless TV shows. Don't know how to like. I don't watch TV. I don't, I don't like to watch mindless things that that dumb me down. Like I like to TV, learn stuff like that. So yeah, either I'm watching documentaries about uh, current events or uh, other cultures, uh -huh. or I'm watching uh, UFO stuff, channelings, um, all kind of U UFO videos. Now the content about this has exploded since 2015, 2016. There was one whistleblower that came out that uh, blew everything up. It's, his name is Corey Good. Corey Good. Corey Good. Corey. Corey Good. Okay. So yeah. If you like sci-fi, you're gonna love his stories. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Did you? Oh, by the way, I still am hearing some feedback from my voice on your. Are you hearing me? Your audio. It's the speakers. I'm gonna lower them a bit. Okay. Hey, this. Okay. Tell me if it's still going. I'll tell you. Uh, Joe Rogan. I don't know if you're familiar with him. You know, biggest podcast yeah, in the world. Yeah, I love him. He did an interview with. Uh, um, an Air Force pilot and instructor, where he talked about a real encounter he had with a with a UFO. Did you see that that interview? I think I maybe I had a glimpse of it, but uh, just a glimpse of a pilot seeing an aircraft now is almost nothing compared to to all the people like talking for hours about uh, about uh, how they lived with ETs, worked with ETs. Like uh, this is insane what's going on uh, if you tap into these videos. Some people are. I've said that they worked for years in space and then come back, came back, and they sometimes they remember just glimpses. Sometimes they remember they remember everything. And uh, well, I, I started watching this just to know for myself if it was real. I just wanted to know: is this shit real, right. or are they shitting me? Like I have to know. So I, I watched everything. Like when I when I get into something, I get into hard. And yeah. I just watched everything, just, just keeping like, yeah, an open mind. So I watched everything, uh, almost uh, everything, and I keep watching it. Just earlier, I was watching uh, another guy that's channeling uh, an AI from the future. His, his name is Kosol Uch. All this sounds very weird, but yeah, this is what I'm, I love to watch. Hmm. Sounds like there is a lot there. Yeah, I don't have a lot of exposure to that stuff, um, but uh, I, I get the whole idea of... I think that, like, I think you and I are kind of close in age, and... Uh, I think that with our generation, yeah, I'm I'm 36, so close. Uh, with our generation, I think a lot of people are looking for a different lens to grapple with reality through. I think that kind of like religion and stuff like that is not as popular as it used to be, or not as accepted as a as a kind of way to a lens through which to view the world. And we're all looking for different ways to to understand true, man. we're so lucky humanity. we're so lucky to be able to to see all these different perspectives online I, i'm watching people all day on youtube i'm always listening to someone for for like maybe 10 15 years so yeah i i feel it has made me grow a lot i learned so much about business i started i i, I watch almost about everything i love to watch about business i love to watch about uh, spirituality and uh, right now for me the most interesting is this uh, this uh, SSP UFO things, Interesting. but yeah, we're lucky to be able to to see other people's perspectives. So yeah, I'm very grateful for other people that make their videos and able us to to grow with them. You know, it's actually why I created. I, I have uh, several channels now. I have the Mukas Gaming channel about Planetside Two, and I have another channel just for learning. It's called Conference Maroc, uh -huh. where I only post long long videos about people teaching uh, teaching subjects, different subjects. And for now, I posted like 50, 50 conference, like very long videos, just how, to 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 share the knowledge. How many channels do you have? Like, I, I'm aware of at least five, I think. I have uh, six on YouTube and uh, th three, four on, on Facebook. And I also helped uh, three other people build their YouTube channels. I, I did it for them. So yeah, I created like nine. That's amazing, man. You have a real passion for visual entertainment. <laughs> man we're so lucky again i i like uh for me it's normal like uh it's people that are who do don't do this who are missing out in my opinion like uh 
are just guys missing out to not document all your life with the it used to be very hard to record video videos i started with a very expensive camera that uh, was recording two two or three pixels and now we have uh, we have phones we have cpus that record anything so yeah it's easy to do and it has a huge value you can sell them i, I built my business uh, based on that and i almost have no no building cost you know when some when people order something from me i don't have to build to 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 buy a how to say the matière première in French, you know, you, have, you, have, you need the components to build something, but to, to build videos, you don't need components. You, ju you just need the, your camera. So I don't need any, any further investment. Just your time. I don't know if you see what I mean. Yeah, I do see what you mean. And that's, you're right, that's a huge difference. Uh, the, the accessibility of actually starting that kind of work is better and has a lower point of entry than it ever has in the past. So people who want to can just get into it. I, I experienced something kind of similar myself. With For me, um, I, I've been playing online games for like 20 years, right? And um, I got to a point where I just was just like, I want to do something more with my hobby. Like I want to do something creative and meaningful. I don't just want to play one game, then play another game, then play another game. And so I started making YouTube videos. I started streaming and I started talking to people and... I was able to do all that with basically an investment of mostly time because um, because it, it, all the tools are so available. Things like OBS are free. Things like Twitch are free. Things like YouTube are free. It's a, it's a different world, man. Yeah, man. I told you I, I, everything got easier. I just changed, the, by the way, to uh -huh. my my headset, my uh, my speakers to my headset. So you okay. don't hear my echo anymore. Yeah, great. That's good. I think that'll be uh, that'll be good. It sounds good so far if you're on it right now. Yeah, I just switched. Yeah, like like I told you, it's uh, it got really easier. And uh, I I really think that it's the people that are not doing it that are missing out. And it has created a huge opportunity that, that I wasn't expecting at the beginning. Uh, I I started my YouTube when I started you on YouTube. It was really because I was depressed. It was in 2012. I had a I had a very boring job. I told you earlier, it was the computer graphic fra graphics. What were you making doing? houses in 3D. Oh, like yeah. Like I was working with architects, sure. making bil making buildings in 3D, like houses, banks, uh, residences. And it was getting boring. Like after 30 houses, 30 buildings, it's getting it's the same thing. Yeah. I was I was depressed. I was bored. I was miserable. 2012, and this is where I created Mukas, the 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 YouTube channel. But I was making videos since a long time, actually, since I was a kid. But mm -hmm. I, I never thought this could be a career. And speaking of making it a career, how what have you done to make it a career? Like I know that YouTube doesn't pay a lot of money for views. Um, where uh, so you're obviously putting out a ton of content. I see you put out videos like multiple times a week on your main gaming channel. Plus you have these other channels. Uh, you're helping people spin up their own channels. I know some creators are using like Patreon as a way to kind of get people who like their work to support them. Um, how have you made a life out of making videos? That's a, that's a very good question. I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking right now. I, <laughs> I didn't I didn't start thinking it would be a career. I started it just because I wanted to have fun uh -huh. and I wanted to share my love for, for video games that I have since I was a kid again. And uh, I knew I had pretty good skills and I had great gameplay to share. And uh, video after video, I, I just seeing the feedback and the comments, I, I really understood that I had to keep this uh, keep this up. People keep saying, uh, "Man, keep this up." You should. I, I had this comment: uh, "You should make a living out of your videos." Many times, like uh, at the beginning, right? Because people were noticing some uh, maybe details in the editing that were really really nice. And uh, so yeah, I just uh, Ty Lopez often says uh, you should take feedback from people you, you don't know. Not don't take feedback from people you know, like your parents. Parents are gonna say you're good at everything. Right. But people online that don't care about you, they're gonna tell. They're gonna tell it straight to They'll your face. They'll tell you the truth. And they're gonna be brutal about shit, it too. Your shit. <laughs> your shit at this, or you're great at this. You should keep this up. And I had this comment that uh, you deserve uh, millions of subscribers many times. So I was like, if if people that don't care about me say it, it must uh, it must be it must have some kind of truth. So I just kept going. You really have to love it to to keep going like that. Honestly, I I keep doing videos even though I don't I don't make I I don't even think about the money when I make the videos. 
I just want to make them epic. So this is how you, you got to think. And uh, after a while, uh, you, you get a certain threshold of views and subscribers. YouTube start to pay you. I got uh, when my first check, I received it by Western Union. It was hilarious. It, it shocked my parents also. Uh -huh. And then after, after hundreds of videos, people started noticing in my, in my city and uh, people started asking me for, for their videos. Like, uh, you, you make all these videos. Can you make one for me? I need a simple mission like this, like that. And uh, this has become my company. Cash Lab. Cash Lab. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I saw your channel and I saw a lot, some of the other stuff you've done. Like you've worked with dancers. Um, I saw you did a, a podcast all about Marrakesh with someone. Um, yeah. I'm just it's astonished at, a... at your output, man. Man, you have to love it. And I just developed systems to, to start to make videos much faster. I used to make videos. It used to take sometimes weeks to make a video. Now, uh, with the, the systems I put in place, it, it sometimes takes a few hours to have the same result. I still, uh, st there's still some videos that I put a lot of effort in, several days. But like uh, now with the, some basic videos, I can, I can make them much faster than earlier. Just by having uh, more organization. Man, After 800 videos, yeah, you start to, to have a system. I'll bet. I bet I could learn a ton from you. This is one of the reasons why man, I started, my, my I started course doing... is free, man. I actually, I actually looked at the first couple of videos of your course. You have a course on Skillshare, all about yeah, how to, to make a gaming YouTube for, channel. For, yeah. What I, I inspired for, you to do for that? Free. Man, I, I have a lot, uh, a lot of questions from people in Marrakesh and online asking me what I use, uh, what software I use, what editing software I use, how I do this, how I do that. And I knew it since a long time that I had to do a course. And um, I saw all the the infopreneuria tenden tendency on, uh, on internet, people selling their courses. And I tried to do that first on Teachable, but uh, I didn't like that I had to send, uh, I had to send traffic all the time to this website. So I switched to Skillshare, where I, I just put it out and I get, uh, and I get paid uh, by the premium members if they watch. And uh, I can give up free links. And for the Plan Statue community, I have no problem gi giving it for free because I know it's going to be reinvested into Plan Statue. That so yeah, I knew be... I had to make a course and there, is, and there is more planned. That's a really cool thing you've done. Um, I think that it, it's one thing to make a really great product that inspires people. But when you can actually take what you've learned and share it with others so they can do the same thing, that's a whole other level, man. Um, I really ad admire that, actually. And I'm going to, I've only watched the first little bit of that sh of a, that course, but I'm sure I have something to learn because whenever I sit down and make a video, I'm always frustrated at how long it takes me. That's why man, I switched to do spoken content. Because, <laughs> well, I like I to talk to people, so there's that. But also, it's yeah. for me, it's much easier to um, just... Uh, <laughs> sit down and talk to someone and record it with some background footage. Then yeah, I see, podcasts are great. I listen to podcasts all the time, but uh, I really believe in the video because uh, it has a huge impact on me myself. Like, uh, like some videos make me cry. Like some videos make me elevate to some incredible levels. Yeah, and I know I can do it right. myself. So, like, why not do it? it? Takes me zero, zero money to create this, and you oh, can yeah. create some incredible emotions into people. Yeah. So like I'm like wow, why don't you take advantage of this? The content on on YouTube is so crappy in general. Like uh, the quality of content is so bad. You're right. There is a lot of good content, of course, but like, uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I wanted to showcase something epic. Why don't we have more epic videos online? I, I'm I myself crave this content. Like uh, the kind of YouTube channels I like is like Threaty. I don't know if you know this player. He, he's posting Battlefield videos. Hey, so he used to post like... I need to interrupt this for a second. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah? My wife just buzzed me. We have a delivery. And because of all the COVID stuff, I, I need to just run down and grab it real quick. So if you okay. don't mind, let's pause for five minutes and I'll be all right. back. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All. Hey, Salim. I'm back. Hey, man. Hey, sorry about that. Yeah, it's cool. You know, uh, with everything going on with the coronavirus, it's just uh, whenever I have stuff delivered... I'm, I feel a little too anxious to just let it sit there in the, in the lobby of our apartment building. And I just feel like I got to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm, no, not really. What do you want? Uh, is, is it a shared shared place? I'm not sure what. 
Yeah, yeah, that's right. How so, is it over there? Yeah, I'm on like the, you know, there are another like 30 or 40 other people living here in this building. And uh, um, the way that the access works, packages are often dropped in a place where anyone can walk inside the building and just take stuff. Oh, okay, and, I see. Okay, we've had I understand trouble with package stuff before, so it's just like, you know what? Let's just make this simple. I'll go get it now. But anyway, I see. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Planetside. Um, yeah, and, a, and about love. the recent update. Yes, our shared passion. Well, that and, you know, YouTube and all this stuff. Um, <laughs> so recently, the Escalation update went live on Planetside. They added the Bastion, the uh, War Asset System, Sanctuary, and soon to be coming Outfit Wars. How do you think it's going? Man, it's going great. Like, uh, I don't know if it's because of the virus, but like the population is going insane. It's nice to see huge battles again. Many people came back in my outfit. Uh, I had some amazing squad plays, amazing PlayStation recently. I told you the last time I played, I pulled a Bastion, and then I tried to protect uh, a six Bastion. Man, it, the game is crazy epic. It reminds me of the glory days. Yeah, that's and, been... uh, yeah. I, I like where, where it's going, and actually, I've been waiting for this. Yeah, like y you're one of those like faithful Planet Side guys that's been playing the game daily for years, and you've seen the low times. You've been through the low times. You've been a community leader through the low times. So it must feel pretty awesome to you to finally see people coming back and to see the population swell and to see multiple continents open on every server. Um, that's got to feel good. Yeah, man. For me, just like a. Uh the normal state of playing side I couldn't understand why this game <laughs> wasn't getting attention. I was like, I'm having so much fun playing this game. I cannot be the only one who thinks this. Like, uh, it's, uh, I always found it weird that this game uh, has such small player base for the quality of content. Like, uh, I used to play a lot of Battlefield 3 before, mm. Team Fortress 2, Battlefield 3, and uh, I paid for Overwatch. I played it maybe two hours and then I got bored. Hmm. And uh, I realized uh, how much content there was in Planetside 2. I'm still not over it. I haven't finished uh, checking out all the cool stuff. Yeah, it's totally unique. So yeah, Planet Side it feels good that uh, it's coming. Because I know the more people there is, the, the funnier my PlayStations are. This is like a basic Planetside 2 mathematics. The more people there is, the, the more epic it is for everyone. Yeah. So I, I, the... For me, the most logical thing for me was to make videos to to attract attention on this game. So yeah, it feels great to to finally see Planetside 2 uh, rise again, where it should be. Yeah, I, I think agree. it deserves even much it more could players. It be a lot bigger, uh, you know. Of course, yeah. Like if if you it compare should be it, a lot bigger. So we we've, we've been seeing some population spikes up to like over ten thousand players concurrent. Is it, is it concurrent or daily? I'm not sure which, but that's like uh like a 500% increase on what we were doing before the update was announced. Um, but even if you compare that number to some of the other bigger games out there, it's not even in the same ballpark. Like uh, if you yeah. compare it to like, 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 like a popular nothing. battlefield game, you could add, uh, you know, 50 copies of Emerald and we still wouldn't be at the same population overall. Um, I kind of feel the same way that you do though. It's like, why, why doesn't planet side attract more people? And, I think yeah, that there are like I some think... simple ways to look at it, right? Like, oh, it's very hard on new players, right? We can agree on that. It is brutal for new players. Um, performance. You need a big PC to run it, actually. Right. There's you, a big need performance to, you need to, like, a nice rig to, to enjoy it at, uh, at its fullest. Yeah. And, and uh, of course, you need friends. Like, uh, there is a lot of requirements, actually, to, to start enjoying it at its fullest. Yeah, the social component, I think, is probably the hardest one of those to solve for most people. Um, it's an interesting yeah. thing. So, Salim, did you play Planet Side One as well? No, I, I, I never, I never played Planet Side One, and I heard about it just because of Planet Side Two. Sure. I went from Battlefield uh, Three to to Planet Side Two, right at launch. Gotcha. And I always thought like a, it's a it's a game that makes you stronger, Planet Side Two, in a, in a way that uh, it make you overcome challenges. The game is hard. You think you're good. You think you're the shit, and you enter the server and you get wrecked <laughs> and you get wrecked over and over as soon as you get a little bit sloppy as soon as you get a little bit lazy you start to getting wrecked in this game so yes. i noticed that it's uh, something it's a game that uh, makes you strive to be better so this is why i 
I believe in this project like in a deeper level, not just in a gaming level. And I try to show this in some some quotes in my videos. Uh -huh. I try to make it very, very subtle, but uh, for me, it's more than just a game. I yeah, think thing... it's a new era in gaming. Yeah, it's completely unique still. Um, I've, I've been thinking about that same problem myself because there are a lot of really successful competitive online shooters that really encourage you to improve your skills. You can name a bunch of them off the top of your head. Think about a Counter-Strike, which has been around forever. That's another example of a very popular game that encourages you to be, to get good, to get good results. I think where Planetside kind of comes in differently is, 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 is trying to be an MMO where it has the continuity and the pos and also the, the sandboxy nature of it, where there are so many battle options that you could lose a fight just because you brought the wrong thing very frequently. Like, um, yeah, I think it's, um, competitive in a more deep, deeper level in a, with the scale, it it adds a, a, the the team play element and the fact that uh, if you don't organize with your faction, this is like uh, having an underpower. This is worse than having other power underpowered weapons. So it it makes it very very hard to balance. Actually, uh, I, I thought it many times. It's a, this game has so many levels of complexity, uh, with the fact that it's combined arms with so many players and with all the the FPS mechanic, the classic FPS mechanics, and more. Like Counter-Strike, you cannot even go ADS. For me, it's like the bare bones of FPS gaming, like Counter-Strike. For me, it was ga it was gaming 20 years ago. Yeah. Now, yeah. You like, go ADS, you have vehicles, you you have sway, like, uh, you have projectile velocity, which makes a huge difference compared to hitscan weapons. Yeah. So I think you have all the, all the components of complexity stacked together this is why i think it makes it extremely deep and uh, that you cannot go over all the the play styles which makes it uh, quite addictive actually also yeah if you like mastering different play styles like i've i probably put like i don't know somewhere between 800 and a thousand hours into the game myself which is pretty pretty low compared to a lot of people like yourself i'm sure who completely dwarf what i've done and a lot of the guys that how, I, do, I how much do you say Probably between 1, 8, 8, how... I would say probably under a thousand hours for me. Okay, it's, yeah, it's pretty tiny compared to some some vets. Right. I have a f four point eight k hours. Yeah, yeah. So you have probably you know six times as many hours as I do. There are guys that I play mm. with in in Bushido way who I'm sure dwarf even that. Um, yeah, it's a game that has k... such a high and like the skill curve is you almost never hit the top of it, right? Because there's always something yeah. new to learn, some new play style to work in. Um, and the it, other players are getting better. Yeah, there's an arms race. Like who's, it's like who's getting better the fastest. It's not who's the best. That's why I find it uh, also like a, when I say it makes you strive to get better. I told you sometimes I think I'm good. Uh, I'm like, I'm the mukas, I'm the shit. I'm going to enter the server <laughs> and kick everyone. <laughs> That's right. And you get in, and, and and you get completely wrecked. And I just noticed that uh, I just have to humble myself and uh, get uh, get my my ash, my ash together, and and then you can get back to the level you you pretend to to be. And that's a uh, that's why I think it's a it's like a, a, a constant struggle to get better in this game. Do you think that's one of the things that turns people off from Planet Side? fact that there is a constant struggle where if you're not if you're not playing intelligently all the time you get wrecked i think yes there is a, there is this, this side to it like it's a very unfriendly for new players or people that are unwilling to learn are unwilling to take a beating to understand what's going on i think one and of the... um, you... i think it also transmits in life like a, uh something you understand early on especially as a man young man is that you have to take beatings over and over to understand some lessons. And uh, it, it translates also to business. I think there is lessons in this game for really all all, uh, all aspects of lives. And there is a video dedicated to it. It's Heavy Damage, Heavy Damage 27, I think, AlphaGo, where it compares gaming uh, with uh, with life. Huh. I don't know if I've seen that one. I might have to check it out. What's the comparison you make? Heavy Damage 28. Uh, where uh, where uh, I compare, I, I put a quote from a movie called AlphaGo, where uh, the top player in this game is called Lee Sedol. He compared his his playstyle as his way of life. He, he, his playstyle is always pushing the the next level, never settling. 
and uh, some, is something he does in his life and in his, in his game. And I compare this also to Brian said too. Yeah, I think it's a way to, to go through game. It's a way to go through life. Like you have to yeah, always, always be to the next level. taking on the next challenge. You have to suffer through uh, the defeats. You gotta suffer. Th- you gotta you gotta get things wrong before you get them right. You know. Um, yeah, and just not settling for all the the same techniques, and uh, and just getting getting stale. Right, That's and what also I wanted to say, yeah. you have to be careful to not. You have to be careful to not accept false wins. Like, I think about uh, some of the other popular games. Like, one of the ones you mentioned was Overwatch, right? Overwatch has, um, each character has an ultimate ability, which is kind of like press Q to win. Um, where even if you suck at the game, you can still get some success by using that ability. Um, there is skill in it, of course, but it, it there seems to be a move in games as the audience expands because you know back in the day there was a much fewer people playing video games and you could assume that anyone who was playing the game was like a nerd who wanted to be good or there were some basic assumptions you could make but as mobile games happened as consoles gained more and more attraction as pcs became more and more affordable as internet became more available uh suddenly you can't make the same assumptions about every single person playing a game you used to and it's opened up uh a desire i think that there are so many games who try to attract every single possible player you know what i'm saying like yeah i see it's uh... side is great because it doesn't try to say we want everybody to play planet side everybody in the world should enjoy planet side it doesn't try to be everything it says nope we're a sandbox shooter you play with your friends and you have to cooperate to win period and that's also what i love about the escalation update is it doubled down on the idea that in order to be successful you have to cooperate you have to play with an outfit um and thank god because these outfits have been hurting for a long time in yeah, terms man. Of support back from the game and the developers um I was watching I think it was in your interview with Rel that you did where you talk where um he said uh that there were at one point like three people working on Planet Side. Yeah, <laughs> nuts. That's Completely a crazy nuts. number. That's a crazy fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can possibly even hold the game together with that many people. It really puts it into context. Um yeah, and I think they've been so quiet about all of uh, what happened. Like people would have, would have been much more comprehensive. I'm sure that uh, if they open like some something like a Kickstarter campaign or a GoFundMe campaign, they'll get a lot. On this. people love this project like to death. Like the and I, and I thought of it like I was trying to understand why people say they have a love hate relationship with Planet Two. Have you have you thought of this? Yeah, yeah, I have. I give that a lot of thought. What do you think? Like, uh, I was I was thinking it's because the it's a game that inflicts pain and also pleasure at the same time. Like uh, you you get frustrated like crazy, and uh, from time to time you get these crazy crazy epic moments. And I think this is the the love hate relationship that people are, are talking about. Yeah, and uh, it punishes you, dude. Uh, it's it's punishing. And and frustrating sometimes without any reason. Like sometimes you get team killed. There's nothing you could have done against this. Sometimes you get road killed. Nothing you could have done against this. Yes. And you just have to accept it. Like you like you just sometimes bad luck and you die. That's it. <laughs> it's almost like there's a life lesson there. You know. So, it's, sometimes it's sometimes when, yeah. you, when you get your ass kicked, you have a lesson to learn. But sometimes you're just unlucky. There's no lesson. Yeah, just unlucky. <laughs> I found this yeah. hilarious. I told you it, it looks like life sometimes. Yeah. In life, you, you have some uh, some things like that. Sometimes you 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 ponder ponder why you failed, and uh, sometimes there's not much to not much to ponder. Yeah, and I think alongside that, I've had a similar thought, which is like the more the more mindful I am when I approach my life, like the more I think about what it is I'm doing and how I'm approaching problems and situations the more likely I am to have a successful result. And it's exactly the same in Planet Side. If I turn my brain off when I'm playing Planet Side, sometimes I'll get lucky and I'll run into a herd of new players that I can just slaughter. Most of the time when yeah. I turn my brain off, I just get farmed and I get frustrated and I fucking quit. <laughs> yeah, the same observation, man. I cannot play this game distracted. 
are just half play it like uh, you have to put your fa- full focus on it and uh, and try to adapt to the situation by the second one of my favorite adaptations that i've watched you pull off is your your ambusher light assault play oh cool i'm glad you like it man it's, it's, i love this play style so much dude i'm i'm i'm, I'm i think there should be more con- of this content i would love to watch if there's uh, any ambusher players here i would love to watch gameplay my guys freaking post it i've had a hard time getting into the ambusher play style i i i pretty much only play light assault so i'm really inspired by the videos that you do for that um for me i think if there weren't jetpacks in planet side i might not even play it i just like it so much but the ambusher style is so risky it's scary man <laughs> yeah man sometimes i have to to retain myself from not pulling this slow that because i know it's gonna it's gonna get me killed and it's just for the for the style and um some some when i feel at my peak performance this is where i pull it i'm I like a, i know i can do something here this is a pretty good opportunity and then i focus like crazy i hold my mouse like almost crushing my mouse uh-huh. and and start jumping around like this play style like it it gets me tired like you, you play one hour like that then you're exhausted yeah yeah, I, I I am not at all surprised to hear you say that. It's a completely high risk, high reward style. It makes great highlights. Makes beautiful gameplay, man. Like, uh, do you this, need this? Could be uh, this is trailer material. Yeah. People told me like, uh, I, my gameplay looks like the, the trailer. Yeah, I think that <laughs> I think that the ambusher light assault is is the most fun looking way to play Planet Side. Like, I, I think if you're trying to market it to someone who's never never seen the game before, never played it. Yeah, and you like, and you want to convince that's, them that's that, that, that it's a dynamic, fun game. It's like, oh, watch this! See some dude flying around yeah. with a shotgun and and like uh, and and a, and a SMG and C4, like blowing the shit out of things and just barely surviving. Totally uh, agree. And this that's big map, like uh, traveling, seeing a huge amount of terrain, seeing the Zerg under you. This is what looks good with epic music. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Well, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to think about that because I like the playstyle. Here's the thing, though, I don't have Asp unlocked in any of my characters yet. Do you think I need to have SMG secondary to make that playstyle work? Man, totally not. Uh, I started doing great with this playstyle, just with the shotgun and emissary in the in the for the pistol. Uh-huh. I, and uh, you can still do pretty good. And uh, it it really exploded and uh, and make and made it more uh, more accessible for other situations. The fact that to have ASP. Because uh, all of a sudden you can you can engage at further ranges, but uh, if you only go if ultra CQC, the the low dot with that ASP is, is totally viable. Okay, okay, I have to meditate on that. I have um, gotten more brave of recent times, and um, so when I was a planet side noob uh, back in I think 2015 is when I started really playing it. Uh, I, I didn't play around launch. Um, I I got so frustrated by getting farmed. Um, I was about to quit. And before I quit, I was like, I'm just going to try something different. And I tried. I decided to load up shotguns. And like anyone with a shotgun, I just started doing much better because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's much easier to cover up mistakes when you're playing with a shotgun because you can abuse client side and you don't have to aim for headshots to get kills. Um, yeah. And, I uh, often do this when I'm frustrated like, to, just to change loadout to something completely new. Yeah, I think that there's a, a little bit of an elitist attitude by some players in the community about shotguns and loadouts like that. What do you think about that? Man, I think when people say uh, shotguns is a new weapon, I'm like, show me the, your footage of you playing with a shotgun. If it's, if it's such a new weapon, show me your epic kill streaks. And uh, then there's nothing. People just talk because they get one shot and they think it's uh, it's easy. But I, th- I get much more kills with carbines than with shotguns, but I prefer to use shotguns because they're much more fun. Uh, they're very unreliable compared to other games like Battlefield. I used to have much more kills with, uh, with, the, with them on, on other games. And I think I honestly think, I honestly think they're, they're underpowered in Planet Side 2. Shotguns are underpowered in Planet Side 2. Shotguns but are underpowered. I still use them. There is an unpopular opinion. Yeah, I know. Do tell. And, How are they uh, underpowered? Man, they're so inaccurate. The pellet spread is huge, and it's random. It's RNG, you know? There's no consistency with them, unless you're at point blank, which is like a 
terrible. The, the only shotgun that used to be good is the the pre the pre uh, pre change jackhammer. Before it it used to has a it used to have a cone a tight hip fire cone. Before this shotgun was really good. Now it's really bad, like all the shotguns. But uh, f still the 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 most fun way to use the ambusher jets. So yeah, shotguns are clearly underpowered. Plan Interesting. Set yeah, I wonder if I wonder if the kind of attitude towards shotguns has to do with um i don't know the whole risk reward thing we talked about where plants can be very punishing i feel like i feel like shotguns in some ways are one of the more punishing weapons to go up against because um if you screw up at all it's so easy to just be brained by a shotgun and you don't have to be a skilled operator necessarily to score kills that way like with, with my example where um I I was getting killed and farmed so bad when I first started Planet Side that I had to use a shotgun to start enjoying the game a little bit because there is a certain kind of inertia where you can't experience what's good about Planet Side unless you kind of have some success with it. Like you have some streaks or you have if all you're doing is getting farmed all the time, um, there's like a, a a a monkey brain chemical thing that kind of tells you to avoid the pain. I think. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I'm just. Honestly, when I when I'm um, when I'm getting in uh, when I get him farmed, I just change a uh, situation or just change loadout. Uh, usually, when I get him farmed, it's my fault. I, I, if you you at some point you notice that it's you who inflict yourself this pain. Like uh, you're running out and in, in, you're running into the same situation with the same loadout and thinking it's gonna go different. Like uh, I don't know who said. Definition is insanity. Is trying the same thing over and over again, right? Uh, thinking, thinking it will make a different results. So yeah, usually when you when I ch change route, try a different uh, way, all of a sudden this is a huge 15 kill streak, uh, and I'm like, I was like, okay, <laughs> I just yeah, have to adjust this. I just yeah. think for a second before respawning, and all of a sudden there's a huge difference. Absolutely. I've done that a thousand times too, where um, I I believe that I know what the appropriate approach should be, or I believe that the way I want to play should work. Like, I'm like, this should work. It should be valid. It should be successful when it's not working and I'm too stubborn or too, or just not paying attention enough or too tired or whatever. Um, exactly. And that, that, that yeah. attitude that you expressed, I think hits the nail right on the head. If I'm getting farmed, it's my fault. I think that that's an attitude that is super critical to enjoying Planet Side, but is not very. Um, I would say I haven't run into a lot of people who who have expressed that idea. Man, uh, it's something that I apply now in my life. Everything is my fault, and it's uh, very liberating when you when you think that way. So it's always on me, so I can change it. I can improve. It's always on me, so I have a. I have an opportunity to change it, dude. I completely. And there's something I, 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 I learned this from Ty Lopez. I think one of his courses. I bought his one of his courses. They're amazing. Uh -huh. One of them is called "Everything Is Your Fault," <laughs> and uh, well titled. Uh, so yeah, he 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 goes into like a well. If you go with this mindset, it's gonna be uh, you're gonna feel to have much more uh, control over your life. If you think yeah, it's the government, it's this. It's uh, the weapon that is underpowered. This is just an excuse to not improve. Yeah. So when I hear is... people complain, I just uh, I just hear people uh, people whining. I hear I hate to hear people complain. People live like kings and they complain. Right, because because they've been inconvenienced by being inflexible with their their view, their view of the way things should go. Um, that's really I I've come to much a similar understanding in my own life um by different means i mean um I, I think that idea might might have some un universality to it where if you accept the premise that when things go wrong you have a role to play maybe it's not your fault but there's something you could have done to have either avoided this the bad situation or to improve the bad situation then suddenly you can do something you're not disempowered and you're not you're not putting out this energy to the world that I deserve this and the world cheated me. Um, and I think there are some people in the world who actually do have a pretty bad deal. 
that she do have a pretty raw go of it. Yeah, of course. And for whom complaining is legit. But I think for people who can spend, you know, two, three hours, four hours, five hours a day playing a video game, that might not apply. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, I really respect that attitude. And it's something I am trying to apply more and more. Um, when you get sick of playing Light Assault, though, what, what other ways do you like playing Planetside? Man, I love the magic. Uh -huh. um, magic, I'm, I'm trying with the ASP, it's really fun to have a, an assault rifle and a battle rifle and the underbars, an underbar shotgun and underbar smoke launcher. I think it's a really cool loadout. I so don't you play, play much, in, a, uh, in an aggressive way? No, I play magic like it's meant to be play, camping behind my friendlies and raising them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just I, I, like uh, there's so many ways to play. I like to, I like to fly, I like to play max when I have an NG. Uh -huh. It's really cool to shred people. Yeah. There is a lot of possibilities. Like, I love to drive, man. Oh, man. Driving with the buggy racer chassis is so fun. Yeah, the vehicle game of it... Planetside is scary, I think. Scary? Why? What I think it's mean? hard to get into for most people. Um, really? Yeah. It's Maybe for some vehicles. For buggy driving, is is actually very simple. If you know, if you know how to drive. I guess. I, I, don't... I don't know. I'm thinking about it like again from this new player perspective for vehicles, um, and and also a little bit from my own perspective because I've I've been a staunch infantry side player almost all of my time, and I, I've only just kind of started to to do a little vehicle stuff because I'm trying to introduce some of my friends from my Discord who aren't who aren't planet side players really. I'm trying to introduce them to the game, and the best way I found to do that is to just create is just run a Sunderer for them and bring them to fights and they here fight here and i get a medic load out and i just follow behind them and revive them and everyone has fun yeah um, pretty good it's a pretty good way also what i do either make them gun for you like for a harasser or, or yes. sender or do, or do a magic ball with them yeah and that that seems to be the combination that that newer players can kind of hook into and enjoy without because they're not having to figure out what fights to go to they're not having to figure out what loadouts to use necessarily i just say hey play heavy assault Play light assault if you want to, but really just play heavy assault. It's easy. Um, it's kind of like the, the the chicken tenders of Planet Side, you know, always good. Uh, yeah, I really noticed with my friends, I got a lot of people into the game. Like uh, the thing that make them stick is uh, when they play in squad. Like uh, when they play with uh, someone else, when they talk with someone, when they can yeah. communicate with someone that know, knows what it is. That's just it, and uh, this makes a huge difference if they stick or don't stick. Even I, when I when the game was going um, uh, really stale and down, uh, I stopped uh, squad leading because there was a very clear reward, so I got yeah. uh, burned out. And uh, many people just stopped playing. Also, the with the the less and less squads, less and less leadership, people started leaving the game. Like uh, I think it's uh, really the life of the game is people who actually squad lead. Yeah, well, they they make the game, and in, in a in a game that's based on cooperation against an opponent um you have to have someone who's deciding where to go um to bring everyone together to unify yeah. your efforts if you don't have that then um you're just so much less effective and also that feeds back into the social component of the game because not only are you grouping together with this person once but maybe you you join their outfit um, and you group to get you group together with them over days and weeks and months, and before you know it, you can't stop playing the game because you have to meet friends who are into it. And every time there's an update, you come back to it because you you're like a a fly to a bright light. You just can't stop yourself. That's the way I feel about Planet Side. I can never stay away from it. Yeah, this is also why I was shocked when uh, when Rel said the, that no one in RPG squad lead or platoon lead. Oh yeah. I was like, oh. My Oh my god, I was so shocked. <laughs> I was yeah. like, no one in RPG squad leads? What the hell? This is like a... I don't know, it's like a dev not playing his game. Developing a game, not playing his game. This is the, the same level of what I felt. Even yeah. though I have a lot of respect for what they're doing with, the, with their means, but uh, I found this shocking. Yeah, I think there is like a, a certain... Like, just to play devil's advocate, like there is... A certain truth to say you don't have to be good at a game to be a good developer for a game necessarily i i get that but man i when when the game has been going in a direction that has not been satisfying to most people for so long 
to come back and hear that, it's a little disheartening. I mean, we all know Rel plays the game. He came from being a YouTuber. So we know that he can play. Um, but not only did yeah. did he say that no one in squad leads, but I also got the impression, and it might have been from the interview you did or the interview with Archie, I don't know which, that no one from RPG really plays the game. In fact, one of the things that Rel said was he tries to give people homework of go home and play the game. Yeah, I was also quite uh, disappointed. Like, uh, this this would be like uh, the most logical thing for me to do, like to bring all the team together. Okay, we're developing Planet Side 2. Let's play Planet Side 2 and create a platoon, show ourselves, maybe live stream it, record it, and just learn... Uh, by playing together of uh, how is it how it is being a squad member how it is being a squad leader yeah and uh, but yeah maybe they just have don't have enough time but i was uh, pretty disappointed by this answer yeah yeah there's i mean even just like like, like a small squad doing valkyrie drops or running around in a sunderer you have one person deciding yeah. where to go everyone else following around and supporting it's it's the quintessential experience and you know maybe you can develop towards that experience without having been in it yourself, but it's it's only helpful. Um, and it seems like it would be a small investment to get that perspective unless, and this is an even worse possibility, unless you can't even do the basics, like move around and shoot competently. Um, <laughs> which... Oh, this would be really bad. I, I don't know what's their level, honestly. I would like to see more of this. There's 20 members in their team. And uh, you only hear about uh, very few of them, like Rel, Carto, yeah, Andy, yeah. and you never see them play. This is why I, I found this weird. I, we should see them play often, in my opinion. Like it's their game; they should be really good. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm wondering. Yeah, maybe like, we should uh, like uh, maybe we need like a community event. You know what I'm saying? Like a play with the devs event. Maybe that's something that RPG organizes because they're too busy, but they just show up to. Um, I don't know. I think there's possibility there. Um, what do you think of that idea? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, honestly, I often run open squads because I know I know many people want to uh, want to play with me. I know it on Miller. It's uh, people send me chats all the time. Right. And uh, very popular guy. And, and I know it makes the the session better for all people. Like uh, I know a little bit of effort squad leading from me can make this, the session so much better for a lot of people. And uh, I think it's worth it sometimes. It, it makes it... Uh, and the people give you back this energy at some point. And yeah, I'll be glad if some of the dev, devs would join my open squad. I'd be so happy, of course. Imagine if, the devs. Devs jo- if a dev joins your squad and he starts using his, his, his dev tools, creating uh, 10 orbital strikes around uh, Ceres on your command. It's, it's so that cool. I think some people <laughs> off. Man, I think they would make people hate the devs more. No, they'll let the people know that they are here. They're the gods, (laughs) the gods of the game. (laughs) Friday night on planet side, the gods, the gods of Araxis have descended. They come with with ten bastion and then they disappear, (laughs) just to freak people out. I want to see. I want to see like (laughs) like Rel and Cardo and those guys have like um be like be like in like maxes except like a hundred times the size. And they're just like walking over base walls, oh, yeah. dropping orbital strikes and shit. And everyone's trying to chase him and shoot him down. <laughs> oh, this would be hilarious. It's planet side PVE. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is this is how they could create like small events just by Raid showing bosses. up in a server. They're like, hey, this is a car tour online. I'm pulling my super tank that's in development. Uh, come check it out or something. Yeah, or, maybe or you need like an silly. alert type for that, you know? Like... um. A special alert. But yeah, people would love that. Huh. People would love that. They'll create content. They'll make video about it. This will create like a... It's a it would be a way to do marketing in a certain way, in, indirectly. Yeah, it's a fun idea. Yep. I think the, the RPG staff does us have to show us that they can that they can roll or that they at least want to. Maybe it might be even like a funny thing. Like they're so bad at the game that we can teach them how to play. And that's that's kind of the event. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, there. You, you, I think you can approach it from any direction, and it's still good. And salty people are going to be salty no matter what you do. You can't worry about those guys. Um, but uh, something. Yeah, will be and it, clearly. it will give like an it will give an opportunity to to the players to to talk 
to the devs about the, the problems they have and uh, what they what they want to be improved, etc. Yeah. I remember an interview of uh, Matt Higby, who said that he often played on his character called Higby, and everyone was sending him tells on what they wanted in the game. Yeah, and I'm sure this this could have been fun. I always liked seeing Higby the, around. Like if I saw him at a fight, I would get excited. If 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 I killed him or he killed me, I'd get excited. Um, he 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 was an awesome mascot for the game. It was sad. Yeah, to no night Ned. <laughs> we had great people man even TRA I, I miss the player studio videos like they were hilarious I, I used to watch this because I wanted to create my helmet uh, at some point uh-huh. then I realized that it wasn't possible mm. but uh, yeah man they had fun reviewing this there was yeah, some there was a, really cool all, content on their there page. was a whole personality component to that to the original Planetside dev team that uh, it seems like hasn't really been replaced and you yeah. know, R- Rel's a cool guy, right? He obviously knows what he's doing. He's a smart guy. But he's not like a, he's not a Matt Higby. He's not, he's not a big personality guy. He's not a big charisma guy. I get the sense. Um, yeah, so, uh, he's yeah. A, yeah. They, they, they need to find does, someone. But yeah, we need a public figure. Have you seen? This is why I think uh, uh, what's, uh, what's yeah. Archie doing is great because he's casting uh, Plan to like a professional caster. And um, yeah. We need yeah, some Archie's people that shout. A cool service. Yeah, well, I mean, so this is what I've noticed. Um, you know, my little my little corner of Twitch where I have a few people who watch what I do, I've always noticed that whenever I do Planetside content, I always get a boost in viewers. And what I think I started to realize is that Planetside, from a content perspective, is kind of starved. Like, there aren't enough yeah, creators totally. on Planetside for the amount of the size of the audience. I totally agree, man. I myself also like. Uh, I'm like. I'm wondering where are all the the plans to videos. Uh, this is a question. I'm I'm wondering si- since seven years. Where are the cool plans to videos? And uh, yeah, this is why I I created com- content mostly on this game. There's a lot of a lot to cover. I'm getting amazing sessions. Like if I I I do a lot of videos, but I have even more content on my hard drive sitting to be edited. Like. Uh, it's uh, infinite the amount of videos that I could do with all the the cool moments I, I, I have, and um, I I miss I miss the Prince Two content creators. Like Prince Two has been like backstabbed so many times. Uh, mm. Sometimes w- when I think about it, like uh, with all people that have left, like uh, the Prince Side Arena backstab, uh, the the big YouTuber backstab that left. Prince Side Arena and, was um, rough, man. I it, it How has do you it feel has about made people. Arena? What's your take on it? Man, it oh man. I found this so stupid from the beginning. Like I was like, what the fuck are they doing? Like now it's easy to say it because uh, yeah, it has been uh, shut down etc. But uh, from the beginning I was like, what the hell are they doing? Are they are they like uh, are they blind or something? Uh, I I th- I thought this from the beginning, but I just shut my mouth. I'm like, okay, shut up, Mukas. Maybe it will work. I don't want to to hinder their success. Right, right. But uh, I always thought uh, this was like the stupidest idea ever <laughs> to create Planetside Arena. Even some people, some people like it, but yeah. like compare Planetside Two and Planetside Arena, it's like uh, going back ten steps for me. It was like, a, man, we have all these awesome features. We're gonna remove ninety percent of it and create <laughs> a new game, and people will love it. And I was like, what the hell are you thinking, guys? So yeah, yeah, I found this too, really stupid from the beginning. I'm glad it's shut down. I'm glad they're focusing now on uh, on playing side two. I, I never liked. Uh, I played a few battle royales. I tried Fortnite. I did. I didn't like. I really liked Apex Legends, but like uh, the nev- the level of polish in this game is insane. Like they would have never been able to in Apex? to get this for Plants Arena. Apex Legends, yeah, the polish, like yeah. uh, it's a just the voice game. acting. It feels great. The it's presentation good. is pitch perfect, and they still Correct. can't get anywhere close to Fortnite. And the music, man, the music, the characters, yeah. voice acting, this is this is really good. Like uh, they had no chance. They <laughs> said I had no chance. Yeah, that was a hammer so, blow so, for Arena. So yeah, and like, and uh, not, going not from only that. Um, do you remember back in January last year when they were starting with the alpha tests and we started to hear back from some of the people playing in the alpha tests and be like, this game isn't really any good. 
um, it really needs a lot more work. And then in February, Apex came out, and then it was like, yeah, I it was really painful, man. I imagine for the devs, it must have been so painful. Yes, to have been working on that and to have seen a product like that come out, um, that's that's fucking wrong. But, I completely sympathize but was, with that, but was, I agree with you too. The whole vision was, on Planet Side Arena, to me, it's like they're cashing going in going backwards on an IP. Like, like it's it's not Planet Side. Like you really shouldn't even call it Planet Side. Planet Side's about combined arms, territorial control. That's the game. If you yeah, want to make a like battle the... royale, ah <laughs> oh, man, it's it's um. The fail was so obvious that uh, the Planet Side two vets saw it like ten kilometers uh, from ten kilometers away. Yeah, I, I don't I'm know not what happy to say. That it failed so hard, but I also and was not at all surprised because um. Exactly. I would say the I would have been more surprised if they were hiring when I said when I posted the the, plans, the, the apocalypse video like uh, oh big surprise there is layoffs guess what the game doesn't work I'm like oh you realized <laughs> I was like oh you finally figure out that the game doesn't work <laughs> finally. So do you oh think that God. the failing of Arena is what what gave us? this big surge in planet side development it seems to be what happened man maybe it's the case actually there's some few things that came from arena like uh, dx11 which was a really big step that's important i agree well the one vehicle and a few weapon skins but yeah i think the planet side 2 devs learned a lot from the planet side arena failed like it, it must have been so painful that now you, you can see the the difference in their behavior that uh, I think it's the Planet Side Arena lesson. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not so sure that lessons actually been learned other than don't do that. The impression that I have is much more cynical, and I would like to be wrong, but I was right about Arena, so let me tell you what I think and tell me if you think I'm silly. Uh, yeah. The impression um, that I have is that they, is that Arena completely failed on every measure, and arena originally being the idea to squeeze what interest they could out of the planet side ip to create a battle royale game they just kind of ran out of ideas after it failed and said oh well well planet side still has something to it let's just take all those developers throw them all back to the main game and we'll see what happens um i think it's because they saw that uh, planet side 2 still had a strong player base and that realm, maybe even with the three-man team, was getting results. And they were like, uh, maybe we should just double down on this. And um, now, just with uh, this first update, I'm sure they, they they have been reinforced in this ID. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's There's a lot of hate for Rel, but I think he knows what he's doing. I think he has a good idea for the game. I think his vision Man, is probably... Um... If he's working day and night every day on the game, what else can you, can you, can you say, say against him, honestly? can't fault him his passion and his patience to to have to have try to <laughs> hold down the fort with two other guys while while the company was throwing support behind another completely different product um and it must yeah. uh, he... <laughs> maybe he's the savior the one who kept it afloat like honestly well it's kind of like those, those all these outfits that have kept Planet Side alive while it's been in the down times. Like you have the faithful people on the development side, like um I guess Andy Seitz has been in the picture for a while too, and Rel and then you have the outfit leaders who have been keeping the game alive um as well. There's a certain kind of symmetry, poetry to that. Uh I don't know. But um Yeah, totally agree about the outfit leaders, like uh it's um they have a big part in the survival of the game and um and and um the developers who didn't give up also like uh, they didn't give up even with three members in the in the dev team so yeah props to to all of them and yeah. i think all of this made the the community very very united and and uh, how do you say the very aware of each other like they know that uh, together this the, the the only way to to go through this together is together is what like the Planet Side Two community understood at some point. Yeah, I guess I guess that that's one way to look at it. That's, I hope um, that that's actually, what happened. I cannot say. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad that all this attention is now on Planet Side Two, like it should have been from the beginning. 
it's very exciting um because i think for players like you and me we can see the potential on planet side easily and it, it feels good to have that kind of I feel like it's finally being reflected back at us from uh, the developers who have been taking Planet Side up until recently in very, um, I don't know, in, in directions that, that don't seem like they line up directly with what we might want from the game. Like you have, you have things that going back a lot like, or like construction, um, the original version of implants, um, and then arena. And you look at all these things and it's like, man, how are those things chosen? Did you see the, um, the tweets that... Um, I think Paul Diazio is his name. He was a programmer on the RPG team before the layoffs. No, I don't remember this. I remember the guy, but not his tweets. Sure. Well, he said something to the effect of um, he was he was expressing bitterness, basically, at um, feeling like leadership set him and his other developers up to fail. That, that, that the direction that was chosen made no sense, which I think a lot of the, the fan base also felt like, too. And when you see a change in direction, like the one we've seen um, in the last few months, the question I always have to ask is why? Why did this direction change happen? Because although I like what I'm seeing now, um, we've always seen big population surges whenever big releases happen. And from what I've seen, there's always a big population surge. And then two months after the, after, after the content comes out, um, the population goes back to normal. So, you know, we'll really see, starting in May, how much of this population is actually going to stick. And I also think that um, right now there's a big question mark with this Outfit Wars format, where the community seems to be a little unhappy about how the selection for participation in that event is working out. Have you been paying any attention to that? Uh, honestly, I haven't checked the Outfit Wars things. I'm in a competitive play like that. Are you Maybe later, to, uh... but... Is NCIV planning to participate in it at all? Uh, if my members want to do it, uh, they, they'll be free to do it if they want. Okay. But uh, personally, I'm not that interested. I think, yeah, the follow-up is going to be very, very important on this update and how they manage the the, the influx of new players. And uh, Rel, Rel's already said that uh, it's going to be very important, uh, the follow-up, because it's not enough just to do one big update. So, yes. so yeah, I, I hope it's going to keep up. But for now, like uh, they're putting like a good basics. Like uh, you need the foundations before building the building. You know, you need the and the outfit is the foundation of this game. Yeah. So yeah, if they yeah. if they reward the outfits and leaders, like uh, after that they can just leave, g give a few out, uh, give give a few tools for the leaders, and the leaders will keep creating content for the game through through their leadership. Yeah. So it's gonna remove some 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 strain from the devs. They, they'll not be forced to, to just push out content all the time because pe because they're going to give people the the means to create their own content. That's what I, I mean. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Totally. And if, for me, if there's any one bit of, of, of hope that I'm holding closest to my heart with all the things that are going on right now on Planet Side, it's that they could have chosen to do so many other different things with this update. But what they did choose to do was something that was completely outfit centric, which I think is the first time that we've seen that. And it's a massive validation of what it feels like the community has known for a long time to be exactly what it's needed. And it feels in a lot of ways like we're all pushing in the same direction now. The developers and the community, the leaders, the content creators, we are all pushing the same thing. And that feels so good, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. It's it's nice that they freaking focus on the on the important things. Yeah. Okay. Well, Salim, we've been talking for almost a couple hours. Um, I'm running out of time, but this has been really fun to catch up with you. Um, I would love the chance yeah. to maybe talk to you again at some point in the future. Maybe after Escalation has um wound down a little bit. Maybe after Outfit Wars comes out. See what your thoughts are. Um, would you be open to that? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, let's see if, if the time is good. Yeah, no okay. problem. All right, cool. Well, we'll uh, I'll stay in touch. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for jumping in and talking to me. This has been really fun. And uh, yeah, I will uh, catch you later. Hope you have a good night. You're welcome, Dick. See you. Thanks for the, the invitation. It was nice. Absolutely. My pleasure. You take care. <laughs> Talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.